In this video, we're going to learn about Django Hijack, which is a tool that you can use in your Django applications to hijack the profiles of other users and see what they can see in the application. So Django Hijack lets your admins assume control of other users in the app. And this can be very useful for troubleshooting and debugging problems in your Django applications. So let's get started. We have here the Django Hijack GitHub page open. And as you can see in the top right, we have an about section. And this reads that with Django Hijack, admins can log in and work on behalf of other users without having to know their credentials. And this is quite important for troubleshooting, as I said. And I've used this before when I inherited a Django application that didn't have a lot of good logging set up. And this application was experiencing some issues where some users were reporting issues and others were fine. And this was based on some of the conditions that were applied to users in the application, but it was very hard to debug exactly what was going on. So in this video, we're gonna show the basics of how you can use Django Hijack in order to solve these issues and how you can actually use it in the admin UI in order to hijack other users' profiles. Now, one caveat before we start the tutorial, you do not want a tool like this to be in the hands of just anyone. You want it to be limited only to trusted administrators in the application. And that's because when you hijack another user, if there is any sensitive information on the web page for that user, you're gonna be able to see that. So be very careful about using a tool like this and giving admins access to the tool. So let's get started. If we scroll down on GitHub, we can see some of the testimonials here for Django Hijack. And as many users are saying here, this is a great tool for support and troubleshooting in Django apps. What we're gonna do is go to the documentation by clicking this link here. That's gonna load up this page. And what we're gonna do is we're going to install this into a virtual environment in Python. And I've got an app open in VS Code here, and there is a virtual environment activated. And I'm now going to paste this command in here, which is going to install Django Hijack into the environment. Now we're gonna work with this setup here. It's just a basic Django project. I've not done much here, but we have a models.py file. And because Django Hijack works with the user model in Django, we need to create that user model or use the default built-in user model in Django. What I'm gonna do is extend the abstract user model, and we're gonna extend that and create our own custom user model. So let's inherit the abstract user. And from Django.db, we'll also import the models module. And we're now going to create a class here called user that will inherit from the abstract user. And that user class will inherit all of the default fields on the abstract user, such as the first name, the username, and the email address. We're also going to add a foreign key here called next of kin. And this is gonna be a self-referential foreign key from the user to another user model. So what we're gonna do here is set up a foreign key. And because this is self-referential, we're gonna use self here and that will link the user model to another user model. And we also need for the foreign key field, the on delete attribute. And let's just say models.cascade for that. So this is the user model that we're going to work with in this application. And this application is, again, it's just gonna demonstrate a problem scenario and it's gonna demonstrate how we can use Django Hijack in order to solve that. What we need to do now is go to the project settings.py. I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom here and we're gonna add a setting here called auth user model and we're gonna link that to the core.user model that we've just created. That's the model that extended the abstract user. Now I'm also gonna add another setting here and that's the login redirect URL. So when a user logs into the application, we want to redirect them just to the homepage. And this setting here is going to redirect the user when they log in to this view here the index view, and that's because in the urls.py file, this empty URL path will map to that view. So now that we've set these two settings, what I'm gonna do is run the make migrations command, and that's going to create this user model for us in the migration file. And once we've done that, we can then run the migrate command to apply those changes to our database. And because we're running that for the first time, that's also gonna create the database.sqlite file for us. And that's on the left-hand sidebar here. Now a couple more setup tasks. I'm gonna to go to admin.py and here we're going to register our user model in the Django admin UI. So we'll import that model. And then underneath that, we can use the admin.site.register function to register that model with the Django admin. After we've done that, we're going to create a super user in the application, but I have forgotten one step here, and that's that the foreign key, we want this to be nullable. We don't want to require a user to have a next of kin. They may not fill that out. They may not specify a next of kin. And in order to make the foreign key nullable, we need to add the null equals true parameter 
to this field. So now that we've done that change, let's again run make migrations and then we can run the migrate command once that migration file has been created. And let's now create the super user by running the python manage.py create super user command. We'll give the super user a username of admin and we can give them a generic password as well. So we now have a super user called admin. I'm actually going to create two more super users. One is going to be called user1 and again we'll just give them a password and again we'll create another super user which I'll call user2 and these users are going to be the users that we actually hijack in this application. We're going to give one of them a next of kin and the other one is not going to have a next of kin and then we're going to demonstrate a problem scenario and solve that with Django hijack. So now that we've created the two users let's run the python manage.py run server command and we can go to the browser and this is the Django admin UI. We're going to log in with that first user we created called admin. And you can see there is a core users section here. And if we click that, we get the three users that we just created. Now, what I'm going to do is to user one, I'm going to assign a next of kin. And if we can scroll down to the bottom here, we can see that field. And I'm going to assign the admin user as that user's next of kin. Now, for user two, on the other hand, we're going to leave that blank. We're not going to give user two a next of kin. Now what I'm going to do now is go back to VS Code and we're going to go to views.py and it's this index view that we're going to work on in this video. What we're going to do is we're going to fetch the logged in user and we're going to try and display their next of kin's username. So let's start by setting a variable here and I'm going to call this kin username and it's going to be equal to request.user. That's the user that sent the request to the Django app. We're going to get that user's next of kin and we're going to get their username. Now you might be able to see where this is going. The request.user might not have a next of kin. Remember that's a nullable field. And in the case that it's null, we will not be able to access the dot username attribute. And that's going to cause issues for some users in this application. Now what I'm also going to do, because we are assuming that the user has a next of kin, this cannot be an anonymous user. This must be a logged in user. So what I'm going to do at the top is import the login required decorator. And we're going to apply that just below here to this view. And this means that anyone that sends a request to this URL that maps to the view is going to be denied access if they are not logged into the application. Let's now change up the context here and we're going to add a context variable called kin username that maps to this username we extract on line 8. Now that we've done that, we have this variable in the context. Let's go to the template index.html that's rendered by this view and we can get that in the templates directory. Currently it just says hello, so let's remove that. And I'm going to attempt to render that variable in this template. So let's paste an h1 tag in here. It has a message with next of kin, and then it attempts to render out that context variable in the template. So let's now assume that we're Django developers working on this app, but lots of users are reporting that they're getting a problem accessing this index page. Now we're developers, we can't just log in as the given users because we don't know their passwords. And we also can't email the users saying, can you please give me your password? That's a security concern. We shouldn't be doing that in an application. But what we can do instead is we can use Django Hijack. Now we've already installed Django Hijack at the start of this video. And what we're gonna do now is go to settings.py and I'm going to scroll up to the installed apps here. This is a list containing all of the installed apps in a Django project. And what I'm going to also do is go to the documentation for Django Hijack. You can see that what we need to do is add Hijack to installed apps in order to use this in our Django project. So let's copy Hijack and we're going to paste that into this list of installed apps. And we also need a middleware as well. So let's go back to the documentation and we're going to copy this middleware here. It's called Hijack User Middleware. And we're going to paste that into this list of middleware. We can do that just at the bottom. Once we've done that, we can save the settings.py file and I'm going to go to the project URL configuration and we're going to add more patterns to this URL patterns list and we're going to do that by going back to the documentation and what we're going to add is the hijack URLs from this new external package that we've added. So let's paste this in here and that has a path of hijack. You can change that if you want and that is including the hijack.urls, basically including the URLs are specified by this external Django application. Now we need these URLs in order to use Django Hijack, so don't forget this step. Let's now see how we can use Django Hijack to see what's going wrong from the perspective of different users in the application. So let's go back to our browser here and go back to the Django admin UI. And what I'm going to do is go back to this users page here. And you can see at the moment, we don't have anything on this list view, we only have the username. 
And that's because we need to add one more application to the installed apps list. Let's go back to the documentation. And there's this section on Django admin integration. We need to add hijack.contrib.admin to our installed apps. So let's copy that and go back to settings.py. And just underneath hijack here, we're going to specify hijack.contrib.admin. And then we can save the settings file and go back to our admin UI. When we refresh the page, you can see we now get this button that says hijack. So the question is what happens if we click this button? Well, if we click it for user one, and remember this is the user that does have a next of kin. If we click this button for this user, then we are taken to the page for that user. And we can see that the next of kin for user one is admin. So there are no problems for this user in accessing this page. And what we've done here is that we've logged into the admin UI with this user called admin. And we are now assuming control of another user's session and that's user one. So we are seeing this application, as it says at the bottom here, on behalf of user one, we're seeing what they see from their perspective in our Django application. And in order to leave the session for this user, we can click the release button here. When we do that, we're going to see a problem. As you can see, it says the none type object has no attribute called username. Now what's happening here is when we release the session of user one, we're taken back to the admin session. And the problem is that the admin user does not have a next of kin. So if we go back to views.py, the admin user, which is the logged in user that we have as the request.user attribute, this user does not have a next of kin because remember that's nullable. And in this case of the admin user, we do not have a next of kin. Therefore, when we try and access a username, that is not specified because none does not have an attribute of username. And that's exactly the message that we're getting here. It says none type object has no attribute username. So what I'm going to do is go back to the admin UI here and we're going to go back to users here and I'm going to set a next of kin for our admin user. Let's just say that's going to be user two. And now when we go back to the page here, we can see that we have the next of kin. We're no longer getting the error message. So that problem is now solved for the admin user. Now, again, if we go back to the admin interface and this time we click hijack for user two, we're going to see the app from the perspective of user two and you can see they are getting this error as well. So if we had a bunch of users all reporting issues on this page, Django Hijack can let us see the application from their perspective. And by doing this, we can see that there is a problem that we have a none type that's trying to access a particular attribute. So now we're going to solve that so that this issue is no longer a problem in our application. So let's start by releasing control of this session and going back to our own session. And what we're gonna do is go back to VS Code. And within the view, we can write an if statement here. So let's check if the user has a next of kin. And we can do it with this statement here, if request.user.nextofkin. In that case, we can tab this over and we can access their username because we know the next of kin attribute is actually not null. Otherwise, if the user does not have a next of kin, we can set the kin username equal to none. So now what we're adding to the context here as the kin username, it's either the next of kin's username or it's just going to be none. So what we can do now in our template, if we go to index.html, we can check above this h1 tag if the kin username is defined. We can use a template if statement for that. So let's say if the kin username, we will then display that h1 tag. And then we can write an else statement just below that. And at the moment, I'm just gonna end the if statement here. Now within the else statement, I'm just gonna paste a paragraph tag here. I'm gonna tab that over. And that paragraph tag will read no next of kin for the logged in user, that's user.username. So let's now go back to the browser, go back to the admin UI here. And what we're gonna do, we are logged in as the admin user, which is this user at the bottom here. We're gonna hijack user one, and hopefully we're still going to see their next of kin because they have a next of kin in the database. If we release that session and go back to the admin and hijack user two now, you can see that they see a different message and that's that they have no next of kin. So what we've done here is we've used Django Hijack to see the app from the perspective of different users. We found that the problem that was existing in the application and we've now fixed it so that users see different messages. And importantly, we no longer get a server error when particular users hit the web page. Now, as I said earlier, it goes without saying, you should not expose this tool to any user in the application. And that's because you do not want any of your users to be assuming control of a session for another user. But Django Hijack can be a very powerful debugging aid in a Django application. And it's something you can even use temporarily. It doesn't need to be something you always have in your app. But if you do have problems, you can use Django Hijack, fix those problems, and then potentially remove it later on.
So that's all for this video. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed or learned anything in this video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.